In this video, I am going to give some insights why pro players are using Ruby as a tank, and Roamer instead of fighter. I will also give you some tips and tricks about Roamer Ruby. But before we start, if you are still new here, then please kindly subscribe, follow, and click the like button. So before we start, this is just a disclaimer that I am not a professional, but I at least reach the global Ruby many times. So let's start this by introducing Ruby. So Ruby is a flexible hero that can be used as jungler, roamer and side laner. But why do professional players use her as a roamer? Here are some possible reasons. First is that Ruby have a weaker damage. There are a lot of fighter heroes that have a higher damage even in the early game. Having a high damage will give you an advantage as a side laner so you can clear the wave faster. Clearing the wave faster means you can roam more freely in the mid lane. Being a side laner doesn't mean you have to stick to the side all the time. Always remember that side laner are responsible to take care of the half of the map, and you will not be able to do it if you can't clear the wave faster than it should. Second possible reason is that Ruby is a crowd control. Crowd control heroes are really useful even in the early game, and it is a waste if you just let her take the side. Third possible reason is because of her life steal. It is pretty much useful in the early game where no one haven't bought any physical defense yet. She can sustain and deal damage to enemies at the same time. This means that you can help your jungler farm faster and kill enemies faster. This is one possible reason why some people want a fighter to be their roamer instead of a solid tank. Professional players do not use Ruby as a jungler as well, because jungler needs a good damage or at least have enough damage. And Ruby is not an assassin that should be used to one-shot enemies, Ruby is a fighter that have a good CC skills. You cannot fully utilize Ruby's skills if she cannot last in the battle. Because of her low skill cooldown, she can spam her skills non-stop, but Ruby cannot do this if she is not tough enough to survive a clash. Now, let's talk about build. Tank Ruby should always build depends on enemy lineup and team lineup. If your team doesn't have enough tough heroes, then you should build an item that will make Ruby tougher. Now let's talk about my build for Tank Ruby. First is the most important of all since this is your first item, the boots. When it comes to boots, I only have two choices, and this is warrior and tough boots. I usually build warrior boots when there are no crowd control and mages in enemy lineup, since this will give me a stackable physical defense. But my best boots for Ruby all the time is tough boots even there are no mages in enemy lineup. The reason for this is because tough boots lessen the crowd control duration that I had to suffer. It is actually pretty useful especially when you are up against heavy crowd control enemies. You can also consider using magic shoes if you are aiming for extra cooldown reduction. This is a good choice as well since now that dominance ice no longer gives you a cooldown reduction. I know that there are a lot of players that are against this boots, so let me explain this thing more clearly. Now that Dominance Ice no longer gives cooldown reduction, you might have to reconsider your set of builds since cooldown reduction is actually a good asset of Ruby. Here is a list of items that gives cooldown reduction in the current patch. And only 1 out of 4 are the only item that I consider buying and that is Brute Force. So, if you build my build then you only get a total of 10% cooldown reduction. That is why buying magic shoes might be a good idea depends on how you use her. I will explain later why brute force is the only thing that I consider worth buying. Now, let's proceed to my second build. Nothing is way more perfect than dominance ice before. Why? Because it gives huge amount of physical defense, cooldown reduction, mana, and can reduces the shield and HP region of nearby enemy heroes by 50% and their attack speed by 30%. The only downfall of this item is it doesn't give you any HP at all. Aside from that, it also gives additional movement speed. But the Dominance Ice now no longer gives a cooldown reduction which is a great loss for Ruby. This is the reason why I no longer build Dominance Ice as my second item. My second item now is Brute Force, because it gives a cooldown reduction now unlike before. But this build is only conditional and may vary depends on the player. To make this item balance, Muntun nerf its physical defense and HP stats which is a great nerf. So I highly suggest that you should only build this item when you didn't build magic boots as your boots. The reason why I build this as my second item is because of its cheap price. As a roamer, you will be the last person in your team to get gold, so prioritizing this cheap build is not a bad idea. Its hybrid defense is also good for early game. Its bonus movement speed will also help you roam faster. 
Now, my third build will vary depending on the enemy mage. If the enemy mage is the type of mage that deal continuously magic damage, then I will build radiant armor. If the enemy mage is a burst mage, then I will build Athena's shield. The reason why I build this item as my third item is because mages are particularly strong in the early to mid game. My fourth item would be Dominance Ice. Although, it became a little different from before, you will still need this item to counter enemy life stealers, healers and all those enemy who have a high regeneration. My fifth item would be Antique Cuirass. This item is also one of my favorite items for Tank Ruby since it can decrease the enemy physical attack up to 24%. This means when the enemy cast a skill on you, the damage they will deal to your team will be deducted since it has the power to directly decrease the stats of your enemies. This item can surely help, not just you but also to your whole team. My last item would be Immortality, having a second life is really useful especially in the late game where you will receive almost all of enemy's skills and attacks. My spare equipment would be the either Athena's shield or Radiant Armor. It depends on what item I still do not have. I will only build this if the enemy lineup have a lot of mages or heroes that deals a magic damage. My last spare equipment would be Guardian Helmet. I usually build this when I am up against heroes that have a lot of penetration or true damage. I also build this when we do not have a healer on our side, so I no longer have to come back to base just to heal myself up. Now, some of you must be wondering why I didn't build Hoss Claws. I will let a professional player answer this question. Pinag-hosklo nila ako, tsaka ako wala naman akong gagawin sa hosklo. Lalo akong hindi tatagal kasi ang lambot-lambot ko noon. Sa MPL guys, walang nag-hosklo na pag-pag-pag-pag-pag. Yes guys. Pag-pag-pag-pag-pag. Walang na, kahit sinong at uh, roamer ang tanungin niya guys. Kahit si Light, si Chakno, si Yawe, kahit pumunta tayo sa MPL Indonesia or MPL Malaysia, Singapore, wala kayong makikita Tank Ruby or Rome Ruby na nagha-hasklo or nagda-damage. Oracle! Ako meron akong doon sa Oracle. Yeah, possible naman yung Oracle. Understandable. Kasi meron nga naman siyang spell bump. Kaso kasi, for me, hindi mo ma-maximize yung spell bump kung wala ka nga bawas. Mas ma-maximize mo yung kunat sa Athena at sa Richard. That is the reason why I do not consider buying Oracle and Haas Claws, because it would be pointless to buy an item that will increase my lifesteal if I do not have damage at all. The reason why I do not like Queen's Wings is because its spell vamp would be useless for Tank Ruby. The cooldown of its unique passive is too long, and it only gives HP and no physical defense at all. The reason why I do not like Thunderbelt is because its unique passive will help me deal damage to enemies, I prefer items that have a unique passive that will make Ruby tougher. The duration of its slow effect is also short. The reason why I do not like Thunderbelt is because its unique passive will help me deal damage to enemies, I prefer items that have a unique passive that will make Ruby tougher. The duration of its slow effect is also short. Now, when it comes to Emblem, I prefer using the Tank Emblem to increase Ruby's durability. Choose Vitality to increase Ruby's HP. This will help you survive against both physical and magical damage. Then choose Inspire. This will give you 8% cooldown reduction. If you add it to Tank Emblem's bonus stats, then you would get a total of 10% cooldown reduction. I prefer this sub-talent because my build will only give me a 10% cooldown reduction. That means I would get a total of 20% cooldown reduction. Last is, choose Tenacity as your talent. This will increase Ruby's defenses when her HP is low. Did you learn something? Then make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and share this video to your friends so everyone will be able to understand how to use Ruby as a tank. Before we end the video, let me introduce the latest Lunar Fest skin for Chang'e. New Moon. This skin is worth 899 diamonds but you can buy it with 30% discount if you buy it within the time of this time limited event. And it will cost you for only 629 diamonds. Now let me show Chang'e's new passive mark effect and her other skill animations. I can say that she looks cuter with this skin. I am pretty impressed. And that's all for today.
Thank you for watching and see you in our next video. And that's all for today, thank you for watching and see you in our next video.